guys are getting closer to question one. Just a few seconds left. Oh God, it's happening. Are you ready? Are you stuck in the bathroom? Well, lock that door and light a candle. Let's go, come on. All right, let's get into it. It's time for question one. Guys, you ready? Okay, question one. How would you ask for the bill in Italian? Bellissima, mamma mia, il conto per favore. When I talk Italian, I sound kind of like a vampire. It sounds like I'm going, il conto per favore, your blood. And you know what? That's the answer. <laughs> I wonder how many of you guys out there are right. 87,417 of you guys are smarter than, wow, that's a lot of people. It's intimidating. It's okay though. I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you're moving on to question number two. Ready? Remember, some of these questions start out easy, but they get harder. If you get an extra life, you can keep you in the game. So get an extra life, buy it, and you stay alive. Wouldn't that be nice in real life? You can do that here. You can use one per game, but not on the last question. You can get them by inviting your friends with your code, playing five days in a row, or just buy one if you see it on your screen right now. Just get it. It's so easy. And then you can go to question number two. Which of these words is part of the US government acronym TSA? Transportation, telecommunications, tambourine. I love the TSA. Oh, it's taking away my hair products and my weapons. The answer is transportation. Duh! 92,694 of you knew that. And uh, you should, because imagine if they were the Tambourine Security Administration. They just like pat you down like... Oh, I like that. Woo! <laughs> okay, you guys ready to move on to question number three? Here it comes. Which of these colors could be described as bluish? Goldenrod, cerulean, razzmatazz. Take a look at this. That's right. The answer is cerulean. Cerulean is blue. Goldenrod is, you're really gonna make me say it? It's golden. And razzmatazz, it looks like the color red could do hand jazz. Hand jazz? Jazz hands. Hand jazz and jazz hands. This is hand jazz, this is jazz hands. Mmm, okay, and now let's do some jazz hands for those of you who are moving on to Q4. Question four, which of these terms does not refer to a real bird species? Love birds, boo birds, cat birds. Hmm? Did you ever think about that? You're most likely to find boo birds at a ballpark because they are home fans who boo one or more members of their own home team. Oh my goodness, 48,163 of you knew that? I didn't know that. I hope the ones of you who didn't get it right don't turn into boo birds in my comments. I've seen the comments, okay? So you can watch the game and you can play the game. Whoever's still here, let's move on to question five. If you're facing the bow of a boat and standing on its rear left side, where are you standing? Port quarter, starboard quarter, or starboard bow? Hmm. Where are you standing? Did you know that port and starboard are nautical terms for left and right? And if you're standing at the left rear of the boat, you are at the answer, which is port quarter. And if I'm standing at the left end of a boat, please, hand me a life jacket. Shout out to my Pisces that can't swim. 26,193 of you must own a boat. Because I didn't know that, I don't have a boat, I take the L train when it's working. Okay, let's all just keep swimming to question number six. Which of these people would typically have the most lanugo? Baby, teenager, retiree. What do you guys think? Who has lanugo? Lanugo is actually a fancy word for baby hair. That means we're talking about babies. Oh, I, I love this. 48,237 of you know that babies have lanugo. I think it's because some of you are probably trying to grow a mustache and all you have is a little lanugo. I had a little bit of lanugo before the show, but I waxed it off, right ladies? 
I think I just boo birded on myself. But you know what? Getting pooped on by a bird is good luck. So let's take that luck with us to question number seven. The actor who portrayed Mr. Bean voiced the role of what in a Disney film? Sleepy mouse, cranky dog, uptight bird. You guys know which Disney film I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you do. It's the Lion King. And if you were thinking of Zazie with a bird, you'd be correct. Okay? 51,311 of you knew that. Of course you did, because you're excited about the new live action version of the Lion King. I can't wait. The new Zazu is gonna be John Oliver. Yeah, I'm really excited to see that movie. I'm starting to wonder though, do they just train animals to talk? It looks so real. You know what else is real? Question number eight, you ready? Which set of US presidents have descendants who are married to each other? Hmm. Harding Hoover, Eisenhower Nixon, Kennedy Roosevelt. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, so who's the presidential version of Tolman Lannister and Marjorie Tyrell? The answer is Julie Nixon and David Eisenhower. Illuminati confirmed. Oh, anyway, 25,336 of you got that right. Where was I? <laughs> True story? Julie and David first met when they were eight. I remember my first eight-year-old crush. Oh, it was when I was eight as well. And I had a crush on this boy who came up to me. I fell in love when he asked me. He said, will you be my girlfriend? And I said, heck you know. And I never talked to him again. Young love. It's very complicated. And you know what else is complicated? Question number nine. What fashion designer famously told his young son that his dinosaur shoes were tacky? Carl Lagerfeld? Mark Jacobs, Tom Ford. Dinosaur light-up shoes are simply not chic, according to Tom Ford. Oh my God, how could you say that, Tom Ford, to a four-year-old? I looked it up, and I, apparently you guys knew too. 12,375 knew that a four-year-old got told, your shoes are tacky? What if he wanted to be a paleontologist? And he went up to his daddy and he was like, Tom, Tommy, I hope he calls him Tommy. I, I want you to look at my dinosaur shoes. And Tom looked at his shoes and he goes, what are those? That's so, it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Let's move on to question number 10. If you're still in the game right now, you should be so excited because you're so smart. I mean, just give yourself like a little shoulder rub. All right, because here we go. Question number 10. Four different chemical elements are named for one village in what nation? Russia, Poland, or Sweden? Erbium, terbium, eterbium, and yttrium were all discovered in the Feldspar mine in Eterby, Sweden. I don't even know how to pronounce those words, but you know how many of you guys knew that answer? 9,074. That's pretty impressive. And it feels like we're dwindling down. We're, we're, we're weaning out the, the people who don't know about erbium, terbium, uterbium, and eter. I would be weaned out if I was playing the game. But you're still here. You mind the correct answer. I had a roommate from Sweden, but I didn't have to go to Eterby to find her. I found her on an ancient community known as Craigslist. You can't find roommates on Craigslist anymore, but you know what you can find? Question 11. <laughs> I found this question on Craigslist. This work of art is by what artist? Take a look at it. Which artist made that work of art? Marc Chagall, Gustave Klimt, or Henri Matisse? Well, if you have 50K laying around, you can pick out that piece. It's called The Circus, one plate by Marc Chagall. But if you only have $5, you know, I'll send you my Van Gogh. I made it on paint night, it's pretty cute. Oh my goodness, 8,203 of you guys are moving on to the final question. I feel a lot of pressure because I know that some of the reasons why you're here is because of me and I really want you guys to get it. You did it. You made it all the way to the final point. You're so close to the jackpot. I'm so excited for you. Are you excited? You should be. Okay, okay, it's, calm down. It's time. You've got to concentrate, breathe. You got this. I know you do. So let me give you the last question. Question number 12. 
the creator of which famous character was not part of the famous paranormal group, the Ghost Club? Hmm? Which creator, male or female, was not part of the Ghost Club? Ebenezer Scrooge, the Scarlet Pimpernel, Sherlock Holmes. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Charles Dickens, Charles Dickens, I don't say that very often, Charles Dickens, were both really into ghosts. So that just leaves us with one person, Baroness Orsi, the author of Scarlet Pimpernel. Wow, 5,476 of you read books? You just won HQ Trivia. Holy moly, you just won HQ Trivia! Congrats, you ghost face winners! <laughs>